Let's talk Hive Fleets and Bogs, an all-consuming devourer of the galaxy, with a video on starting collecting Tyranids in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd take a video to talk about starting a Tyranids army in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. It's certainly an exciting time to be collecting the Bogs from beyond. Loads of shiny new miniatures coming from the faction at fairly reasonable cost from the Leviathan box. Though at the moment it's a bit of a weird limbo time for the Tyranids army. Lots of cool miniatures out, but also waiting for their new codex and a bunch more. In the video we'll talk about the pros and cons of collecting a Tyranid army. Some ways you can go about planning a Warhammer 40k collection. A discussion of the first purchases for the Tyranids, and in particular looking at the things that are and aren't available at the moment out there in the wild. Discuss further steps that you could use to get your army together for the Codex release, and what sort of things might be changing then, and finish up with one example army list. Loads and loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First up, why might you want to collect Tyranids in the first place? They do have some rather cool lore in Warhammer 40k, perhaps being one of the only races that is pretty much a truly eldritch horror. An unknowable, all-consuming swarm of bio-horrors striking from beyond the galaxy, and we don't know how many are out there. Making war typically in great big tyrannic war incursions, often with all-out invasions to overwhelm and swarm enemy worlds, devouring all the biomass they find upon it, and then moving on to the next one, their swarm only stronger. When Tyranids fight and battle is with infinite biomorphologists, creatures and drones specialised to every facet of war, whether it's great towering monsters with chitin as thick as battle tank armour, or hyper-adapted apex killers that are well capable of dueling the elites of the other factions. Most Tyranid organisms are sort of symbiotic bioforms, having weapon beasts built into them, firing hails of disturbing living ammunition to burrow into enemy armour. And perhaps most unsettling for the armies of the races that would resist them is they constantly adapt and evolve, acquiring new traits and abilities to overcome their foes' defences, or counter specific enemy threats that might not be able to be overcome by raw muscle alone. As a pretty well established faction in Warhammer 40k, Tyranids have really quite a large miniature range. Before 10th edition they haven't really had all that many releases for really quite a long time, quite a lot of the current Tyranid range hails from around about 8-10 to 10 years ago, though that's all set to change at the moment, getting a whole load of new shiny plastic kits, certain kits redone, and a whole bunch of new things thrown in as well. As we'll talk about in a second, they've had rather a lot of very nicely realised models from that new Leviathan box at the launch of 10th edition, and plenty more on the way shortly, we do know some of the things that are coming already. A few bits of the range are slightly more dated older resin kits, or some slightly more old plastics that don't really hold up to the standard 40k at the moment, perhaps things like Gene Steelers, Hormagaunts and Lictors and things, definitely kits that are showing their age a little bit, though I feel like with a massive plastic release on the way for them, there's a very good chance that most if not all of these will probably get updates. Sure being that now's a very good time to be collecting Tyranids miniature wise, it's unlikely that they'll get so many releases in one short stretch of time for a very very long time to come. Just for some examples of things you might expect out of the Tyranid army, here we've got a psychophage devouring the flesh of space marines and psychers alike, a feeder organism to process the planet. In the middle at the back there's a neurotyrant, basically a hive tyrant commander that bears itself a lot with psychic energy, striking with great big blasts from the warp. At the front we've got a couple of Tyranid termagants, the basic foot troops of the hive fleets, fighting with flesh borers with horrific grubs that bore into the enemy shot at range. And on the right we have some redoubtable Tyranid warriors, synapse infantry that can direct the lesser swarms, fairly heavily armed and armoured with elites with bone swords and ranged bioweapons. For a few more flavours, here we have some venomthropes with some toxic spore clouds on the left to shroud other Tyranids nearby from the enemy's view, a winged harpy striking from the skies, Tyranids often make war burrowing up from under the ground and through the air, and a great big walking battle tank that is the Tyran effects, holding the fearsome rupture cannon, an enormous bioweapon well capable of smashing through the thickest enemy tank armour. There are quite a lot of flavours of Xenos monsters and swarms that you can build an army around. Price wise in 40k, Tyranids are somewhat middling I'd say. Typically armies of them generally want some infantry and some bigger monsters. Often some of the cheapest things in 40k tend to be the ones that have relatively few miniatures on the table. I would say that Tyranids with some older kits that are perhaps priced a little bit more cheaply don't tend to be quite as expensive as some armies like say maybe Adeptus Mechanicus or Gene Stealer Cult. 10th edition should in particular be a cheaper time to get your hands on certain Tyranid bogs. They've had a bunch of models discounted recently in the Leviathan set, plus some starter sets for 40k coming out. Certain miniatures should be at least fairly cheap to get your hands on. 
Finally, gameplay-wise, you can find Tyranny's current rules as downloads from the 40k index on Warhammer Community. Despite perhaps traditionally being a bit more of a melee faction, they really can play a very mixed army. I've got lots of big powerful bio cannons and things to play a surprisingly shooty Nid build. And for army archetypes, you can build around big swarms of lesser critters, Nidzilla big monster lists, and there's plenty of flavours of different elite Tyranids in between. As mentioned, probably some of the strongest lists around at the moment might have a good balance between some of the stronger monsters and stronger infantry, each filling their own battlefield role. And they do have some fun whole faction rules, a shadow in the warp that can cause army-wide battleshock to terrify some enemies off objectives for a turn, and a rather powerful detachment rule in their adaptive swarm, getting big benefits against tanks, infantry or characters, depending on what your opponents have got the most of. Currently power-wise, they're kind of low to middling in Warhammer 40k, not the most exciting faction for sheer raw strength, but balance changes happen quite regularly in 40k. They do have a codex coming out later, which will probably add a lot of strength to the army. Plus there's always the possibility of points cost making them better in the near future as well. If you do decide to start playing Tyranids, there's plenty of ways that you can start out with planning a Warhammer 40k army. If you want to look at their unit profiles, then at least at the moment, Index Tyranids with all their unit cards and launch detachment is all available to download at Warhammer Community. Find it in the download section under the Warhammer 40,000 heading. That's a good place to start with understanding the faction and how it plays on the table. All the points are also available online as well. You can use Battlescribe and Warpedia to mess around with some army lists. At least when they update anyway, there's usually a bit of a lag time between big rules drops and the eventual updates coming out. Tabletop Simulator could be used to play Warhammer 40k virtually. It is all very unofficial, but there's plenty of mod packs that allow you to play player versus player Warhammer online. That could be one way of trying an army before you buy it, or you could just proxy some models in some test games. YouTube's a massive resource for Warhammer 40k collecting. I made a fair few Tyranids videos myself, including a recent tier list for how strong the units are shaping up so far. And I've also done a full index overview as well, talking through every datasheet. I'll link down to both of those in the video description. There's also battle reports, painting guides, and lore in abundance on other channels. If you want to learn about any one facet of the Tyranid army, well worth having a look. Finally, for getting more informed, you could also check out social media. There's plenty of things like discords, facebook groups, and subreddits based on the Tyranids. They're a very popular faction, and it doesn't take more than a google search to find them. It can be a place to ask some basic questions to experienced hobbyists, or just imbibe a whole load of interesting discussions about the faction, and get a bit more informed that way. For thinking about how your swarm specifically is going to start taking shape, you could think about what sort of plan you're going to have for a completed army, and maybe think about your paint scheme and test that out. When you're building an army, you could just have a fairly well-rounded force with some big things, some small things, and maybe some disruptive infiltration units, or you could skew really hard to one way or the other if you'd like. Maybe you just like having massive swarms of gaunts to overwhelm the foe, or want to break things apart with massive biocannons and dangerous monsters in melee, with a bunch of carnifexes and haruspexes and exocrines and things. There'd also be the option to theme your army around one specific hive fleet as well, Perhaps a tunnelling force from High Fleet Jormungandr, which likes to operate below the surface, or go for a Carnifex Crusher Brood from High Fleet Behemoth. There's a lot of big Tyranid High Fleets that have their own lore and fighting styles and colour schemes that you could definitely go down trying to recreate. At the moment, though, in 10th edition, Games Workshop's gone down the path of not having any one paint scheme tied to certain rules or anything, so at least the units themselves will operate kind of similarly. Might change a bit when there's detachments available in the Codex. As an early thing to do, it might be worth just drafting out a very rough initial 500 point list or in a 2000 point list, just for how your swarm might look when it gets up to a big size, and it helps you think about how you might get there. I certainly treat that as a bit more of a rough guide as opposed to the be all and end all. As you slowly get a force together and learn what works and what doesn't, I'm sure things will change, but it might be a good first initial step to start thinking about. Then for actually getting some paint on some miniatures, it's probably worth buying a small set and working out your colour scheme before you go whole hog and replicate it across an entire army. Probably one of the best miniatures that you could just start out with might be a standard Tyranid Termagant. They're generally fairly easy to come by these days, having had loads of them just come out in the Leviathan box. Maybe think about picking some up off eBay or something. There's lots of established paint schemes for the various high fleets, but you can absolutely have a bit more creativity and come up with something that you like the look of. If you just literally bong Tyranid paint schemes into YouTube, then there's absolutely tons of different options that come out. Games Workshop themselves have come out with a fair few painting videos as to how to make battle-ready Tyranids. Could be a reasonable place to start just as a beginner, and add on any other interesting things that you might like, or change the colour scheme up a bit. When getting Tyranids together, I feel like in general they're perhaps one of the easier armies to get an effective paint scheme done very quickly, if that's what you want to do. Both contrast paints and dry brushing them tend to work at least fairly well, at least on the more organic parts. 
lots of natural curves and recesses to get those paints and the dry brushes to pick up or shade. Contrast just might be a little bit tricky on some of the larger models. Carapace armor, I guess, certainly means that you can have a Tyranid Horde hit the table very, very quickly should you want to, just following a basic color scheme. Getting on to actual first purchases you could think about making, Tyranids are in a bit of an odd spot at the moment, really quite a lot of hype and excitement for the army, but they are in a bit of a limbo both in terms of rules and of models wise. At the moment we're basically after the big Leviathan box release with a whole bunch of Tyranids miniatures, I've got the digital download rules, but also we know that a whole bunch more model kits are coming in a few months time, alongside a new codex for the faction. In the meantime, as mentioned already, the index rules are completely free to download off the Warhammer community website's download page. That one gets you both the full rules for the faction and the points. I guess in theory you could pick up these index cards that you can see here on the right. These basically say the same thing though, and are more like a quick reference guide if you don't want to be faffing around with PDFs in-game. Games Workshop in the UK does appear to have sold out of the Tyranid ones at time of recording, though you might be able to find some more on the internet or third-party sellers. They maybe are just a tiny bit of a questionable purchase as well, considering that there's going to be a codex coming out in the not-too-distant future that will invalidate these. But if you can score some, then they are handy enough for quick reference in the meantime. Codexes can have a bit of value as well, just for some general lore, pictures of models, and exploring the backgrounds of the high fleets as well. You might be able to get some Tyranid codexes from previous editions going off eBay or Amazon somewhere. They tend to go a lot cheaper than Games Workshop would have previously sold them for, so that could be interesting enough for a bit of a read if you want something hard copy to read about the Tyranids. Otherwise, generally when starting a 40k army, general advice is to try and go for a few units that you think you're going to want to use in just about every single game, or start out with certain discount kits that Games Workshop might have ones that get you quite a lot of miniatures for a relatively inexpensive amount of money. This is Warhammer though, all things are kind of relative. Again, the limbo state of Tyranids does work against them a bit here. The most relevant thing for collecting cheap Tyranids right now, I think, is the Leviathan box set. That is sold out of quite a lot of official places, though still might be available in some. But then following that, there should be some Warhammer 40k starter sets coming out in the very near future that will heavily feature Tyranids. And you might also be able to find some older discount sets, Say, for example, the old Tyranids Combat Patrol, or potentially the Boarding Patrol. Otherwise, perhaps some units just to fight over objectives might be a reasonable one to start out with. Perhaps Warriors, Gargoyles, or Termagants could all be okay. I'd perhaps start with something small before moving on to a big exciting monster. Though obviously, if there's anything that's really fun that just you want to pick up early on and really motivates you to collect the faction, no reason not to go out and get something early. i just maybe try and make it something that you think you're going to use in quite a few games while you've got a small force on the go. While we're talking about picking up Warhammer 40k models, I bear in mind the different ways that you can buy them. This will be old news to a fair few people, but often the cheapest way to pick up 40k miniatures isn't directly from Games Workshop, but that often can be the most reliable if they do actually have stock of things. If you are looking to economise a bit and maybe afford a few more bugs for the swarm, I think about checking out local gaming stores wherever you might be in the world. They'll often give fairly meaningful discounts over and above what Games Workshop would sell a model for. One example here in the UK is Element Games, typically giving between 10 and 20% off Warhammer models. That's linked down in the video description. And there are plenty of others around the world. Noble Knight Games in the USA for 8% off, or Gap Games in Australia, normally around 20% off. All of those are linked down in the video description. Any purchases through them do help support Auspex Tactics a little bit, though it doesn't cost you any more if you want to buy through them. There are plenty of other alternatives that are very similar that offer the same thing in various places around the world. Particularly at the moment, I'd certainly be mindful of the second-hand markets with eBay. Often worth a look for things that are discounted in big sets as well, particularly Leviathan, as we'll talk about in just a second. And there are plenty of third-party manufacturers or 3D printers that make lots of great alternative sculpts that would fit in quite well for Tyranids. Often things that look kind of similar but are legally distinct from Games Workshop's miniatures. That could be another way to flesh out the swarm for cheap, and also get some interesting new sculpts to boot. Going through a few of the more recent discount options from Games Workshop, obviously the big one is the 10th edition launch box Leviathan, or at least the Tyranids half of it. A great big massive box that gets you a huge amount of new Tyranid sculpts, plus the Space Marines, and arguably one of the better deals that Games Workshop's ever done in terms of discounting their own miniatures. Still an expensive box overall, as you just get quite a lot in it, £150, €200, Euros, or $250. It also comes with a big copy of the core book and some mission cards too. For the Tyranid half of it, it gets you 20 Termagants, a Psychophage monster, the Neuro Tyrant with the Neuroloids, 5 Barbagaunts, a Winged Prime, 3 Von Ryan's Leapers to set up in the midfield and jump on people, the rather brutal and dangerous Screamer Killer Carnifex with the massive Talons, and 11 Neurogaunts to protect your Neuro Tyrant. 
Overall, it's around about 800 points of Tyranids, never mind the actual Space Marines that you get in the set, which really isn't too bad for the cost. I'd say at the moment that getting your hands on the Tyranid half of Leviathan is probably the easiest way to start Tyranids right now. If I were just jumping into Tyranids from a standing start, my first port of call would probably be to try and land the Tyranid miniatures in the box off eBay. Just having a very quick look on the market on the UK at the moment, it looks like the Tyranids would set you back around about £70 in the UK, or around $120 in the US. So a little bit less than half the box set, of course that's not counting the book and the cards and things. In terms of getting numbers of plastic and points for the money, it's about as good as it will get. The price of these will probably gradually creep up in the future as these box sets become a little bit more scarce. You could also just look for individual units if you don't want all of it, but just say want some cheap termagants. I saw a listing or two that was only around about $1 or $1.20 for each termagant, which is better than you'd normally get from Games Workshop. Finding the whole box at the moment might depend a bit on where you are in the world. Some third-party gaming stores have had second runs of them, though at least in the UK and USA, the Leviathan box set has generally been sold out for a little while now, so I guess it would be third-party sellers or eBay or something like that, perhaps likely at an inflated price. Otherwise, I do think it's quite a good fun set, really quite a nice balance of interesting units from the Tyranids, including a few powerful ones. Otherwise, going from technically a past box set to a future one, they're also going to be coming out with some 40k starter sets which pit Space Marines against Tyranids. These ones get you a subset of the Leviathan box set, not all of it. And these have basically been announced but not fully released at time of recording. I would expect them to be out sometime within 2-8 to eight weeks from this video releasing. There's going to be 3 different size offerings. I think if I was mainly looking to try and get a miniature army together, I'd go for either the 40k starter sets or the ultimate starter sets. If they follow the same pattern as the 9th edition releases with this, these box sets should be a decent discount compared with what they'd normally sell these units for. They generally like to have them as a slightly cheaper entry point for newer players and to get them into the hobby. In the standard 40k starter set that's pictured, you get the Psychophage Monster, the Winged Prime, 3 Von Ryan's Leapers, and 20 Termagants, plus the Space Marines of course. It could be a good option for a box set to split with a Space Marine player if you know them, and if you don't want to just paint up a few random Space Marines of course. The ultimate starter set I feel that like might not be quite as good a deal literally just for the miniatures, it only really comes with an extra 5 barb gaunts on top of this to allow you to field the whole combat patrol force for Tyranids. It comes with terrain as well, plus a mini rulebook. I'd say the main differentiator between this and the ultimate set is whether or not you want this plus a terrain and a core rulebook, otherwise probably just stick with this one as it'll be cheaper. Lastly for discount sets I thought I'd just mention the old combat patrol Tyranids, this is the one with the Hive Tyrant, three Tyranid Warriors, and a whole bunch of Termagants. It's around about 500 points of models in game at the moment, and could be useful to some people. It's £95, pounds, €125, Euros, or $160, or at least it was when it was on sale. Again, this one has rotated out, but third-party retailers might still have a fair few in stock. I'd say perhaps the biggest downside for current Tyranid collectors are the old-style Termagants, which I think just are objectively worse models compared with the newer ones, a bit more blocky and chunky with mold line issues. Though to be honest, if you just want some cheap gaunts for the swarm, the main thing that you're going to be looking at is a whole bunch of termagants from a fair distance all ranked up, and it's not going to make the biggest difference to your experience whether or not they've got super good details on or not. I bear in mind as well that they come with 36 of them, and that doesn't fit amazingly well with Games Workshop's new 10 block squads, just something else to bear in mind. Next let's talk about the Approaching Tyranids Codex, which is something that I think people starting Tyranids definitely need to be aware of at the moment, perhaps some miniatures to avoid, and just roughly what to expect with a new book update. Games Workshop said that the new Tyranid Codex will be coming sometime in autumn, that could be over quite a long time period, anywhere from September to December technically. I would guess probably on the earlier side of things rather than the later side of things though. The new Tyranid Codex will bring new rules for the army, plus a big wave of new miniatures, that we might well see on the 15th of July if the Tyranids win that Ogrim campaign, as Games Workshop said that they would reveal them then. Otherwise, unfortunately, it'll just be Space Marine previews, I suppose, and the Tyranids will have to wait an unspecified amount of time later, probably a few weeks to a month or so. With the rules updates, the new codex will likely affect unit strength and power. I'd imagine that at least a few of the datasheets will get redone rules to fit in with the new rules that come out there. The main thing that it's going to add for main Warhammer 40k collectors is a whole bunch of new detachments to play with, basically different ways that you can field a Tyranid Swarm. Each of them is supposed to be themed around one type of Tyranid army. They said that there's going to be one that's themed around big monsters and carnifexes and things, and one themed around an infiltration swarm. I'd guess that'd give some big advantages to Lictors, Von Rhines, Leapers, and Gene Stealers and things. For new miniatures, I would expect at least a fairly sizable wave, 
probably somewhere around seven or eight new kits will be my guess. For things that we've had confirmed so far, we're going to be getting some sort of non emissary titanic monstrous creature. That one should be quite good fun. I strongly suspect that that will be a very, very big monster. We've got the new Death Leaper already shown off. He is an upgraded version of the previous Tyranid character. We'll almost certainly be getting a full plastic kit for Termagants with the new sculpts plus the different options they can field, things like Spine Fists or Devourers. I'd guess at least a fair bit more besides. One thing in particular that seems quite likely could be Tyranid Shrikes, winged warriors that would give that winged prime something to lease. As mentioned earlier, there are quite a lot of kits as well that seem ripe for an update. The Lictor, Biovore, Pyrovore, Gene Stealers and Hormagaunts all have some of the older kits in the Tyranid range or ones that have slight issues. The Hormagaunts fall over a lot. I think it's odds on that the majority of those will be replaced by new plastic kits when the Tyranid Codex comes out. So at the moment I would hold off on getting any of those miniatures unless you really like the current sculpt of the model. As I guess they'd be replaced by kits that are probably going to be newer, shinier, and probably quite a lot higher quality as well. It's not impossible they could update a few other things, but I feel like these are definitely first in line compared with other kits that are generally a bit newer. In any case, in the meantime, there are still plenty of options for expanding the Tyranid army forward. Obviously, rules-wise, with the chance of updates on the horizon, there's definitely a lot of scope for just collecting what you like the look of. Rules can change, but the models that you get won't, so it's probably not best to wind up with a whole bunch of things that you hate the models of but like the rules for, just in case things shift around a bit. Having said that, though, here are just a few of the units that I consider a little bit stronger in-game currently compared with most. The Barb Gaunts have got good anti-infantry and can slow down enemy squads. Really quite potent to have at least one squad in the army, and quite nice in the Leviathan box. The Harrispex is perhaps the biggest, most dangerous and nastiest monstrous creature in terms of combat. It does have a rather enormous maw for swallowing the enemy whole as well. Zone Thropes are fairly tough with their invulnerable saves and have got some solid psychic damage output. They also give nearby Tyranids invulnerable saves as well, which are quite nice. Gargoyles are perhaps one of my favourite horde ones. They get to move fast and get to move, shoot, move, which can give them a bit more survivability getting to hide behind things. A Hive Tyrant or a Swarm Lord with some Tyrant Guard is a nice little formation to have stomping up the board. They can help out with stratagems quite a bit and have some serious melee power in themselves. The Nero Tyrant from Leviathan has a fairly solid flamer attack on a cheapish Nid body. It's also quite cheap for that whole board shadow in the warp debuff, which is nice. And then for some Tyranid Monstrous Muscle, the Exocrine and the Tyranifex are the ranged monsters I'd currently rate some of the highest. Both of those really quite effective firepower in their own right. I might be tempted by the Acid Spray Tyranifex. And the regular Carnifex is led by Old One Eye, pretty efficient as well. Old One Eye allows them to re-roll hits for their weapons, making them far more dangerous. It's fairly tanky himself with a 5 plus feel no pain and regeneration. I would have some sort of very rough end goal in mind for perhaps a 2000 point army that you're slowly building towards. Obviously things could change with the codex. I tend to collect things in small chunks as opposed to huge armies all at once. Get a couple of units, get them painted up and get a game in with them, and move on to the next shiny thing. Finally, here's just one example of one 2000 point Tyranid list that's done kind of well at a tournament recently. I talked about this list briefly when we talked about one strong army list for every 40k faction. It's a list that was run by Cameron Gilbert, who used it to take forth at Element Games Grand Slam, going 4-1 against 30 players. I do quite like the list, and it looks like it's actually quite a good one for new players to start with, as it looks like it is actually heavily building off the Leviathan box set. There's a Neuro Tyrant, 5 Barb Gaunts, some Von Rhines Leapers, and some Termagants in here, so good use for most of those miniatures. Beyond that, for other interesting things, we've got a Brood Lord leading a squad of 10 Gene Stealers. They're very nice at charging into objectives and cutting things up with a whole bunch of devastating wounds. Some fast-moving Hormagaunts to advance and charge up the board. Some Warriors and Barb Stranglers for some midfield stretch and getting some synapse, I suppose. Three Zone Thropes for some scary anti talent damage with those big Warp Lances. Old One of the Carnifex and a Winged Hive Tyrant for some melee muscle. An Exocrine for some big range damage and a Malaceptor for some mid-board presence. And also using a Forge World sized Hyra Jewel, a bit more of an exotic miniature that one. I probably wouldn't go fussing around too much with Forge World models if you're just starting Tyranids. Probably worth sobbing that out for a Tyranifex if you're starting out, and maybe putting in a different unit to make up the points differential. Looks like a fun and fairly balanced Tyranid list, and quite cool to see Leviathan box miniatures doing well. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed a rough breakdown of how you could start collecting Tyranids in Warhammer 40k in 10th edition currently. There's so much that you could say on the subject. Feel free to let me know any other thoughts for newer players down in the comments below. Anything that you'd wish that you'd known if you'd started Tyranids, or you might be thinking about doing at the moment with the oncoming Tyranid Codex. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Orthbet's Tactics, 
And if you'd like to check out some more Tyranid things, then I'll leave that link to the Tyranid tier list down in the video description, along with the one for the full index overview that we talked about before that. I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about for the bugs in the future. Finally, if you have enjoyed the video and found it useful, and you'd like to help keep these videos coming, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support the channel. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link's down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.